I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board and also the Finance Committee. Do we have a quorum for the Finance Committee? I don't think so. Just the Sunderland Select Board. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting, April 1st. I motion we approve the minutes from April 1st. Seconded. If we have a motion made and seconded, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Our order of new business today is to appoint Donald Patterson as registrar for the town of Sardella. Any history on that, Jeff, or do you just want us to vote you on? Yeah. All right. That's <laughs> the information I was given. I would entertain a motion to appoint Donald Patterson as a chair. All right. I uh, motion we appoint Donald Patterson as a chair. Sure. Okay. I second that. Uh, we have a motion made and seconded to appoint Donald Patterson as a chair for town Sutherland. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two up again. Thank you. Okay. That is our new business. Uh, first up under old business will be the uh, budget review. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted. I'm sorry. You want to rearrange things? I don't know who's here for what. Yeah, if we could do the planning board articles, and that gives the finance committee another couple of minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, beautiful. So there are two planning board articles. Um, one about standalone battery storage facilities, and the second one is um, about. Structure conversion. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. correct. Sorry, I'm just, uh, I just I have both proposed uh, revisions on my laptop. And my understanding was that battery storage, unless we did something with zoning, if they could sort of put a battery storage facility anywhere uh, solar was allowed. Is that that's that's the worry. Um, there has been, um, this has come up with a number of other towns, um, and there have been some towns that I, I'm, not, I'm not fully up on the latest doing for the Attorney General's office, but my understanding is that there have been a couple places that have either ignored it or tried to outlaw it completely, and that's not been, not been okay. Um, I think, uh, I want to say, I don't remember if it was where or, or somewhere in the sort of Quabbin area that um, that tried to outlaw completely these battery storage facilities and the AG, um, AG's office essentially struck that down. Um, but we wanted to take action because there have been inquiries about, um, you know, from a, a, at least one company that has wanted to put a, a storage facility um, in Sunderland. And so we felt it was in the town's best interest to uh, to address that with a specific um, amendment to the zoning ordinance. So, what's the cutoff between a customer having like a Tesla power wall in their basement and a storage facility? Is there a like a kilowatt? Yes. So the, the, the way that we've structured the amendment is that um, that. There is, um, sorry, if I'm just giving one yeah, bro. second. Um, so there's a sort of accessory battery storage that, you know, would be somebody has their own array and they want to have essentially backup yep. batteries. That That is dealt with and that is essentially allowed anywhere um, that you know you can have essentially a, a solar array on either residential or commercial property. Okay. What we were what we then specifically defined was this um, <clears throat> sort of a standalone battery storage facility that's not necessarily connected to uh, solar generation What's because the some of these uh, larger battery storage facilities that our understanding is that they're not necessarily directly tied to solar. It don't have to be. Mm -hmm. um, they're essentially just these big, essentially battery farms, whether they're pulled, they're, they're pulling energy straight from the grid or whether it's you know tied to solar. Um, and it's, uh, essentially it's just these big you know, facilities that are just, just battery storage. And essentially they're doing, um, uh, you know, buying and selling So they energy. buy at night when it's cheap and then- Exactly, it's, 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 you know, uh, 
energy arbitrage, basically. They were trying to make money on the fluctuation in price. That was one of my questions. Is if it's just tied to solar, that's sort of one one whole bucket of wax. But if yeah. it's tied to if it's no, we, we wanted to address that. that. Sorry, we wanted to address that yeah. amendment, but what we specifically wanted to um, wanted to deal with was were these standalone mm -hmm. uh, facilities that can take up large amounts of space and and have that have concerns for us that were did unconnected to you know people having batteries for their own solar arrays to yep. uh, essentially as like a generator sort of backup generator yep. okay great i don't have any other questions on that crystal do you have anything you wanted to ask about that I, i'm i guess i'm just not totally understanding what the what's your amendment to this so the the amendment to um and i, and I think we provided uh essentially a uh you know, a, a red line showing the changes that we would make to uh, the different zoning articles to address this standalone battery facility. Um, so what what we've learned from other towns that have tried to do this is that we can't outlaw it completely. Um, we, we can't essentially not allow it under, under the zoning. What we've tried to do is limit it to certain areas. Essentially, I think it's the C2 um, uh, for C2 zoning, and that is primarily along um, uh, 63. Um, by the quarry, right? By the quarry, yeah, so right. northeast. Does that also include the section of 115, or is it just the 63 section? Of I don't recall exactly. It's um, If you look at the zone map, it's whatever yeah. that stretch of, <laughs> of C2 is. What are we next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah, it's a little tiny corner up there on 63 then. Um, and it is limited, and I don't recall. I have to look at my um, at the actual amendment. Um, so the way that we have it structured is that any sort of so large scale ground mounted solar or electric installations with accessory battery storage, so that's up to four acres, um, would need. It is allowable in C2 with, with planning board, a special permit from the planning board. Right. And then um, the standalone facilities of up to four acres would also be permitted in C2 with a special permit from planning board. So they would have to go through all the, the special permit requirements like any other special permit from planning board would issue. Right. Um, and then uh, a facility greater than four acres would be not allowed anywhere and you think that that's something that would pass the attorney general based on our on our research and, and our okay. consulting with the uh with franklin county regional uh um, council governors we, we believe that that would, okay. would stand up to uh to I mean, for these small town there's not a lot of space to be able to put a large enough for it anyway exactly. like, yeah. two, i think the whole c2 is like <laughs> no yeah but yeah no, it's, it's, it's yeah okay i just wanted to just make sure that we weren't setting ourselves up for something being challenged so. yeah i mean this, this is an area that is getting a lot of action right now. And mm -hmm. there's sort of everything is admitted in the state of, of flux, but we believe based on you know what has been happening for the last couple of years that we are on, on firm ground here. Great. Is there even three phase power up there that would make that a, a place to do something like that? If you're talking pulling it off the grid, you'd, they wouldn't be pulling it off single phase. I mean, that's something that we would need to address as part of the, any sort of, um, you know, special permit process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were, there have been concerns raised that, um, that, and I think that we, if I recall, we added um, some language to, to make sure that, you know, any concerns about you know, fire suppression, those sorts of things would be, would be addressed during that process. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. And then the other one is which one? Uh, the other um, amendment that we are proposing is um, an amendment to the structural conversion provisions in the in the zoning code. Um, and we were approached by um, a. Uh, 
a developer that wanted to repurpose the uh, the, the cozy corner property mm -hmm. on Old Amherst Road um, to convert that to, I believe, uh, a six unit uh, residential yeah. conversion using the existing structure. That would not be permitted under the current zoning, um, nor would, you know, based on the, uh, the, the particularities of that, that property, they wouldn't be able to do, um, you know, like a flexible, uh, um, flexible development. And we, we wouldn't want uh, to end up in a situation where somebody would come in and try to, you know, build a, a large residential development there, essentially tear it down and try to, try to put up something, a larger, you know, subdivision or, uh, or larger um, multifamily unit. Um, so the amendment that we're proposing here would allow um, an amendment to the structural conversion that would allow, you know, any, I mean, I have it right here, any dwelling in existence as of 1978, which is how the structural conversion mm -hmm. uh, provision is already um, already written of at least 10,000 gross square feet of building area, um, could get a special permit for conversion to multifamily up to eight units, provided they meet all of the existing criteria for, for structural conversion that are in, already in that provision. Okay. Um, and they also need a special permit from the, from the planning board. Um, and based on our our review of you know the existing uh, properties and structures in town that would you know that, that predate 1978, um, we believe that there are very few, if not none, other than than this particular. Yeah, we got a list. I think it's other than the actual part of complex that already exists. It was like the closing corner of one, this building. Right, and like one or two other ones in town that are already being used for commercial. Right, and um, <clears throat> you know, we we did hold a public hearing on this. There were some um, some comments and some worries about the way it was originally. We would originally drafted the amendment um, that it could allow, um, you know, for people to convert, say, like agricultural structures or something like that that, mm -hmm. that might be more plentiful. Um, you know, and you end up with a lot of multifamily housing developments in town that we, as sort of an unintended consequence of this amendment, um, we have sort of reworked the proposed amendment a little bit to confine the structural conversion to dwellings um, that would allow multifamily up to eight units. So it would need to be a dwelling that was in existence as of 1978. Any We believe that under the um, based on the definition of dwelling in the code that they would call oh. Oh. Well, Can you give me your definition of unit? Are you talking because you're saying up to eight units. Right. Are you talking full kitchen, full bathroom, we're, a we're full talking... apartment versus turning into something like a rooming house with a community kitchen, right. community I mean, bathrooms? Our, our understanding of unit would that it would be um, you know, a Family unit would include, uh, you know, bedrooms. Essentially, Dw dwelling is is defined to include some sort of kitchen area. Um, the plan that we have seen, the preliminary plan that we've seen for the Cozy Corner property, is separate, um, essentially apartments. I think they're mm -hmm. like three or four bedroom apartments that they're planning for that space. Could we ask a question of the planning board person? Is that possible? Um, we were we went to the hearing. We were the people at the hearing who yeah. were concerned. And um, unless you've changed anything, um, unless you've changed it drastically, the um, definition of a structure is still not really, really clear. Um, the other thing we talked about was to make sure that it was that this was only on uh, not on rural residential that doesn't have septic the current the current laws that would be changed have provisions about 
septic and this doesn't and and yours did not is it still confined to only um uh c c1 and c2 was that it um, the village village yeah. residential is it is it confined to village or is this still open to all of sunderland it's open to any so this is this is open to any zoning classification that also would be able to would be able to take advantage of the current structural conversion provision. So, you know, it, it still it, it would still require a special permit, but it's uh, um, village residents, village center, rural residents, and C one. Um, now, I, I, I recall your comments at the uh, at the public meeting. And what we did to address the concern about structure and the, the sort of loose definition of structure that exists in the, in the zoning bylaws was to not refer to structures at all um, in the, the new part of the provision, but confine it to a dwelling in existence as of April 29, 1978. So then it wouldn't include like town hall and stuff like that. Right. It wouldn't they just hall. said, you know, that this building was. It, it wouldn't include, you know, the various, you know, tobacco barns and, and other sort of agricultural buildings that I know you would express. Yeah. Yeah. Or other businesses or um, warehouses and, and that kind of thing. And, well, so. Um, yeah, I, I mean, dw dwelling is defined in the in the zoning code. If, if I, I can put that definition on the record, if you if you'd like. Um, so dwelling is. Is there is there any reason that it has to um, include rural residential that doesn't have septic? So the. Uh, our our feeling about the the rural residential was that the rural structures in the rural residential zones um, have you know for the the entire time that the structural conversion provisions have been on the books have been open to structural conversions and to my knowledge and to the other members of the board knowledge who many of whom have served much longer than I have. Uh, there haven't been any conversions of any structures in rural residential districts. Um, we also felt that that it it didn't we we didn't feel it necessary to make the provision more restrictive than it otherwise than it was going in. Um, as far as as septic, I mean, there is a requirement in the special permit um, or in the structural conversion provision. One of the um, one of the things that they need to, uh, to, to show in order to be eligible is that, um, let's see, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to find this on my own. Requirements of the state building code in article two of the state sanitary. Yes. Code. Yeah. So they, they have to, they have to demonstrate that, you know, what they're, what they're building is, uh, um, you know, complies with with state regulations as it as it pertains to uh, sewer and uh, and the like. What um, one of the things? Uh, th and thank you, appreciate that. One of the things we talked about at the hearing was the fact that many home structures in rural residential that have state approved private septic systems that were up to code when they were built and scientifically approved and all that are failing miserably. And that the state of the art of private septic is not something that should be relied on anymore in the future. People are, are uh, when they're buying or selling houses now or buying, uh, running into costs of over $30,000 to bring their stuff up to code. Uh, all we're saying is that anything in the future should not, unless it really has to, rely on private septic, which has not 
proven reliable to this point. And there are new systems out there, but they haven't been proven reliable over time. Um, the guidance on septic doesn't go by units. It goes by bedrooms. So um, a quarter, it's a quarter acre per bedroom. So like a four bedroom house or a four bedroom unit is supposed to have an acre of land for good septic. And I don't see why you'd even include it in that. In the, it, the, the, the nursing home is on septic, isn't it? Public. It's on public septic, it's on public um, sewer, right? Well, I believe, unless I'm mistaken, all the properties that would fall under this are all on the sewer system. I don't remember no, seeing anything that's, that's outside the, the sewer system. What we're saying is it doesn't include it, and he just said it, it includes every place in Sunderland. And we're looking to make what, sure what, that... What we're saying is that there are... It only counts properties that are before 1978. Not before, dwellings before 1978 yeah. that are in excess of 10,000 square feet. And what we're saying is that there don't exist any structures in the town of Sunderland outside of the sewer areas that qualify for that. And so it's really a non-starter. I mean, yes, I get that we did want to prevent that, but it doesn't actually matter in this case because we're not talking about any structures that are within those. Yeah. Those and, and I mean, I, I think getting into the weeds of you know, the effectiveness of the state sanitary, uh, you know, scheme is sort of beyond our yeah. purview so, as a state. I guess my, my big question for you is, why do you need this? Is it because the closing point wants to develop and the town wants to support that and doesn't currently have the infrastructure? Is it because Cozy Corners brought up something that we go, oh, this isn't covered and we want to make sure that it is covered in a way that the town is happy with? But what's the impetus? Yeah, what well, I... I what we wanted to address was, I mean, specifically what we thought was a, um, you know, beneficial adaptive reuse of this property mm -hmm. that um, that is better than the alternatives of either it being torn down and and you know going through the process of you know having less control over what might go in. Um, and also, or it just continuing to sit um, as it is right now, which is, you know, empty and, and not productive. Yeah. No. Okay. It, couldn't be, it couldn't be an office building? I, we, we haven't, there's not been anybody that's come forward that's been interested in purchasing, this pro purchasing the property and turning it into an office building. I mean, it, it, you know, Old Amherst Road is not exactly a commercial corridor there. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know if, if there's anybody in the future who might turn it into an office building, uh, as far as I know, there haven't been in the past and there isn't anybody now. So. Okay. All right. That's all my questions. Did you have anything else? No. Okay. It's it's adding on more units to Sunderland without adding any 40B. It, it says you're not saying anything about affordable housing. So you're adding units without adding the 10% affordable. I have a question. Yes, please. Um, I just want to clarify that the structure conversion is literally the structure it's not saying this property can have more units it's saying you if you can fit this number of units within the footprint of this building yeah and this building is over ten thousand square feet and was a dwelling prior to 1978 then you can do that but you can't expand it to fit the extra units you can't no there, there's no you're not permitted to expand the building footprint nor are you allowed to add you know, new entrances or exit. I mean, there, there's, it's fairly, um, it's fairly strict. And well, if you so. can't was, add, was, was the nursing home a dwelling? How could you possibly well, like that? So uh, I'm sorry, I, I <laughs> spoke. You, I'm sorry. you can't add, no additional exterior entrances shall be created and visible from a street. So you can, if it's not visible from the street, you can add, you know, because you have to make it right. in line with fire code and, and things like that. Um, 
but they're not permitted to essentially take that building footprint and, and turn it into something larger. You're turning, you're talking about converting an existing structure as it currently exists. Okay. Uh, I have a quick question. How many um, people were living in that building when it was still Cozy Corner? Okay. Uh, I want to say about 60 patients. Right. So 60 patients is a lot more people and a lot more responsibility for someone than 10 units, even if it maxed out, right? That's... Yeah. Yeah. And um... yeah, but it's kind of a different strain. No, it's a different group of people, but it, you know. No, but it's a different strain on the sewer and everything else, right? It wasn't six or eight kitchens in Washington, you know, it was... Right, but was that many toilets? No, there well, were 60 toilets. That's that many people having <laughs> problem or having sharing with the sewer. I, I, wouldn't even call, I wouldn't have even called a nursing home a dwelling. I mean, they didn't... They didn't it, it was a hair facility. And so are you... Are, if, it, if it was a care facility, are you... By your definition of a dwelling, are you excluding it? Based on our reading of the definition of dwelling in the zoning code, we believe that this structure qualifies. Were, were that units in Sunderland for dwelling? You didn't I'm sorry. Call, you, you didn't, didn't call it 60. You didn't add it to your total of dwellings in Sunderland, did you? You didn't say 60 dwellings. 60 units. Well, it wasn't 60 units. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know how it was classified when it was, you know, actively used as a, as a care facility. That I don't. I, I still don't understand why you don't just put down, take out rural residential. And then you don't have to worry about people coming up with, with any reasons to find a loophole somewhere and put it on a land where the septic is not good. Because to our knowledge, there are no properties that exist that would make that a thing we need to worry right. about. I know. <laughs> we didn't feel it necessary to make the provision more restrictive. Yeah. Was going in. That's if that's going to be your answer, but well, you know, yeah, we're, we're, we are we that, heard okay. you say we're going to move on with our meeting now. Could I uh, ask one more uh, question? How come this wasn't posted? the uh, The agenda wasn't posted today. It's not on Channel Fifteen. Um, the agenda was not on the Selectman's agenda. It was on the calendar only, and we had a search for it. The minutes from last. Um, Selectman's meeting were not posted. So that's something we can talk absolutely about. talk with Jeff about, yep. but we're not going to do that during a public meeting. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Um, At thank this you time, very much. Yep. I would entertain a motion to. We've added these orders. We've not added either. We didn't add them. Okay. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to add, which Article 12 article. is the. Um, the solar bit or the. Yeah. Bit. Okay. Uh, no, no, sorry, not 12. Nine. Okay. At this time, I've entertained a motion to add Article 9, the battery storage article. I'm, I motion we add Article 9. Seconded. We have a motion being seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing. Yeah. At this time, I've entertained a motion to add Article, which one? Ten. Ten, which is the zoning uh, for conversion. Is today the last day to add that? Um, no, I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know that. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that as long as we have the warrant finalized seven days before, but, okay. I motion we add Article 10. Seconded. We have a motion being seconded. All of the paper? Aye. Aye. Nothing, Jeff. Yeah. And you 
want us to recommend anything, or are we leaving those alone for recommendation? Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to. You um, can vote on you whether or not you want to recommend. I don't know about you, Crystal, but I'm fine with not recommending these and just leaving them as they're added, and the town can discuss them at the town meeting if they want to or whatever. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm fine with Article 9, but Article 10, that's going to. Then we can wait until the third member is. So. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, let's wait let's on the recommending because they're added. They're added. You know, we're, we're good there. If, if we end up not recommending them, we'll decide to do that at the beginning. That's fine. Okay. That should be all. No, we actually had one more article, which was the citizen article on um, 16 and 17. Yeah, do we want to wait till we have all three of us here on that one, too, since we're. Do we add that one? I don't think so. I think he, I thought we added it, but we didn't recommend it last time. Oh, uh, yes, you did. You're right. Okay, so in that case, yes, we, let's wait on recommending until the end of yeah. round. Um, and it, again, we may not decide the board just want to recommend that one, but yeah. that's a whole conversation right there. Okay, um, and I believe Jeff is going to take him back to all the war articles we need to discuss. Well, um, you did not vote to recommend um, the budget or the capital budget or so some of the articles do. I think you were waiting for the finance committee. Yeah. So I didn't know if you wanted to go through okay. and allow the finance committee to vote. So already, is yeah. that other? Do you have a quorum now? I do believe Linda joined. Yeah. Linda, is that you? Linda, can you hear us? I'm emailing. Do you want to start giving us some a rundown of what we have to do to approve and then we wait for her to? Sure. Um, article two. a microphone or a, anything next to that phone number? The call. I know. She usually calls in, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. That's not usually yeah, yeah, that's not yeah, yeah, that's that's usually usually get what her number is. I, I know. And it's, I feel like I'm close, but I don't remember. Yeah. I feel like I can't do five. I don't remember. Sure. Well, 413 is a really unique area. Um, while we're waiting to see if Linda's jumping on, um, Article 2 is compensation for elected officials, which is just the finance committee. So, Article 3 is the operating budget, Article 4 is the capital budget, Article 5 is um, prior year bills, Article 6 is the CPA. Um, for the Sunderland Public, uh, for the Grace Memorial Library. Article 7 is a CPA for the multi use path. Article 8 is the CPA administrative article. Talked about 9 and 10, planning board. Article 11, uh, you already did. The Finance Committee um, would vote on the revolving fund limits. Article 12, we talked about. And then Article 13 through 18. Consent articles and very good. All right. Linda? Yeah, hi. I'm sorry. My, I couldn't unmute a minute ago. It, my phone went to somewhere else. All right. So that was a quorum. Excellent. No, yes. So let's start at the top and work our way down. So we have Article 2 compensation for elected officials, um, assessors, $2,994.21 each. Three, each of the three. Um, Board of Health members, 1500 for the chair, 1200 for the other two members, uh, $200 stipend for the town meeting moderator. Planning board, um, $1,000 for the chair and clerk, and um, $550 for the rest of the members. Um, the town clerk salary, uh, the select board um, salary is $3,275. Um, Vice Chair, 2850 Clerk, 2850 So, and just so those are yearly annual. Annual. annual salary. Just, you know, so people listening can understand they're not a monthly or a weekly <laughs> yeah. salary. Yeah. <laughs> and other than possibly the, the town the clerk. clerk, which is a whole different thing. Right. The rest of these are all stagnant and have been for. Yeah. Probably about as long as I've been alive. So yeah. I, I was going to ask, um, <laughs> when was the last time they changed? Um, in the last 
four years, the assessors and I believe the planning board have changed. Okay. Yeah. And maybe the I board think board of health did. Maybe it's the board of health, but they can. At one point, I remember seeing the select board for at least the last 10 have changed. That's not true. They, they, could, they took no salary in 2020. Let me rephrase. I hadn't gone off. I have a point of um, a question. Um, I know when there's conflict of interest, you're not you're supposed to abstain from voting, right? So I know what, as the, um, on the finance committee, when I'm also on the library board of trustees, I don't vote on those. Mm -hmm. Things is that true, or is that just true of the personnel committee when I'm on the like I get a little confused on when I'm supposed to abstain and when I'm not supposed to abstain. And in the same interest, I'm wondering if one of these planning board five hundred fifty dollars is my husband. Am I supposed to abstain because of that? Like I just I just want to. Even it's not changing, I'm not sure. I would say call it a conflict of interest personally. Oh, I, was, I just know that when I first joined this committee, there was all this like. We all had to figure out like how yeah. you know what hat I had on. So I just was curious if there's times that I'm supposed to be abstaining. Yeah. You don't know. I recall the ethics commission. I know. Right. In regards to um, when you first joined, we had it. We needed a unanimous vote to right because you hold other positions. Right. Um, okay. It so was it's more like getting me on. It was exactly. It wasn't necessarily like procedural issues. But okay. So my understanding, Jeff, is that if there was a conflict of interest, well, let's say I had a conflict of interest, it'd be up my choice what to do about that as long as what I do about that is ethical, basically. And so you could say I have a, a, an interest that could be considered a conflict, but I'm choosing to go ahead with the vote because I don't think it's going to be an issue. So as long as I don't vote anymore, I can still vote as long as I do. Yeah, if you yeah. didn't say anything and went ahead with the vote, that might be something some of the like, well, right, hey, you that's that's like open think, about it. Yeah, I think that's the okay. science should just and it's a vote. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and and you know, on the same token, the the select board chose not to not to recommend that one because it had to do with our pay directly. You know, that's our our choice not to do that was because that that's more of a direct that's more of a direct conflict of interest in our eyes than than yeah. Other ones, yeah. Yeah, I take all his money, so it's kind of the same. Yeah. <laughs> Again, if it was like we were going from five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars, that might be a different situation. But this is, yeah. I should, I should have taken better notes on that. Uh, that conflict of interest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I stick yeah. to them every year, but I kind of I know, right? They're all in the same way. All right. So do we do, do we want to have the finance committee alone vote on that one then? If they want to. Yeah, I mean we have four, right? So, um. We have to, uh, yeah, what's the procedure here? Do we have to make a motion? Yep. Okay, motion to support Article 1 by the Finance Committee. Article 2. Article 2, Article two by the Finance Committee. Second. Yeah, I'll second. And then you say all. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Article 3 is the operating budget. Um, so it has not changed from last week. Um, so I will respond to any questions, but nothing to say. So. The one thing I just wanted to, just to bring up is that there will likely be a small adjustment based on the police contract. Um, but it's going to be not a huge adjustment. Um, I, I mean, I'm comfortable with me and Crystal voting on that one if you want to. So, and I just want to make sure we get this procedurally right. If there are small decreases here and there, small, that's not a problem, right? Um, I think that you would probably, it, it's probably best to hold off on that as, as long as possible just because when I put it into the motion language, that's going to be the final, and you'll see the final numbers. And I think it's better to um, to vote on that. But yeah, I mean, occasionally, like nothing's going to change by more than a couple thousand dollars, right? Like less than ten thousand. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I'm just thinking. There's probably still, you know, like I'll use South County EMS as an example. They're trying to renegotiate their internet. 
which could drop it down. I mean, we're talking internet. Um, you know, we're not talking, <laughs> right, we're not talking huge amounts of money, but, you know, there might still be some of those little things rolling in that are, you know, kind of on people's. Yeah, I mean, you, you could also take a, a preliminary vote and we can hold, you know, we typically schedule a meeting for first thing before, you know, a meeting, although that would be too late to print there. <laughs> We're yeah. just trying to think of um, realistically. So, the yeah, I mean, if you want to wait another week, I think that's fine. Um, I don't know that we're going to have resolution in a week, but... Right, exactly. So that's the thing. Some of these things, I don't know when we'd actually have resolution on. You I, know, I feel more comfortable voting now. Okay. So we know we're good. And if nothing changes, woohoo! If something does change, we can then right. amend our, our vote down the line. But if we don't vote today, then we have to come next week <laughs> and right. do that if, you know, if we have nothing else in the agenda, you know? So... All right, Peter, do you have any thoughts? I think that it used to be always if you you could always come in with a lower number that part of you know issuing to the to the warrant and motion project would alerting people, you know, sort of an upper limit. Mm -hmm. So that you know you want to be more cautious if you thought there was a number that might end up going off. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, this is great. Yes, Article 3. Okay. I motion um, we approve Article 3. Seconded. All right. We motion being seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing done. Thank you. Number the Finance Committee does the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, I motion that the Finance Committee approves Article 3. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Article 4 is the capital budget. Um, and I did not bring my capital budget sheet, so I'll try and do it. You got a loader, a truck, yep. and a third vehicle. A loader, a truck, um, a steel structure. A repairs to the... Repairs to the public safety complex. Yep. A new um, cruiser. Uh, HVAC for the library. Uh, the first day for the, the elementary school yep. and the first part of the the knee splits for the elementary school for eighty thousand and upgrade to the power <laughs> and also the uh, office repairs. Office repairs. Yeah. Uh, so totaling about um, four hundred and six thousand. Um, we had uh, we have four hundred and nine thousand. We revenue this year from taxes plus like, two hundred yeah. and two thousand that we put in last year. Mm -hmm. So um, our balance in wow. capital stabilization will actually go up after spending. Well, it'll go up a little bit, and then it will be yes. more when we get the rebate on the mini splits. So yeah. um, we are spending most of the extra, of the the new revenue, yeah. but with the understanding that it's about twenty five to thirty thousand that's going to come back as a rebate at some point, um, and okay. just also for visibility or durability or however you want to put it, um, the Capital Planning Committee does also recommend that the town keep track of all the capital money that's not spent so that when it comes back into free cash or otherwise it's reabsorbed with the town, it gets earmarked to go back into capital stabilization so that if we don't spend it on this project, it doesn't just disappear back into the budget and yet it continues to be earmarked moving forward. Yeah, like the libraries want to know about with that with the HVAC, right? Like yeah. we budget for two every year, but this year none went out just because we got lucky. But that does that mean four go out next year? Like, the, do we need to, rec, you know, whatever, re try to get the stuff we did spend? So that's helpful. Yeah, and that's, that's the goal is, is to make sure that money is. If it's for capital money, eventually that money should be spent on some capital project, and we want to make sure we know where it is at all times, and you know, move it back. Either either close accounts out to the free cash, but then move the same amount of money for free cash to stabilization, or close them out directly to stabilization through a warrant article or whatever we want to do. Um, but just in general, we want to keep that accounted for. Mm -hmm. All right, I would entertain a motion. I have a motion. The select board recommends Article 4. Seconded. Motion being seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nothing done. Okay. Mm -hmm.
I recommend the finance committee recommend that article form. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, Article 5 is prior year bills. I think we have one prior year bill for about $1,200. Hey, Moshe, Mr. Lockboard recommends Article 5. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing different. Uh, you actually already recommended that three nothing last year. Okay, perfect. Double that time. Five nothing. <laughs> <laughs> or two and a half nothing. <laughs> I recommend the finance committee um, approve Article 5. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Article 6, uh, 177,000 of CTA funds for the Grace Memorial Library. So I've worked has already added and voted to recommend. Um, that's another one where I have a conflict of interest because I was part of the library trustees who proposed that to the CPA. Yeah. So I'm um, going to vote for it, but I wanted people to know that I also proposed it. Uh, motion that the finance committee approve Article Six. I'll second. Um, can we can we hang on a second? What is what is the grave? That's for the historic society, right? It's for the building. What are it's they going to do? Um, make sure it doesn't fall down. In short terms, it's uh, outside. <laughs> Outside, shore up, you know, water, masonry, like not have it fall apart. Yeah, historic preservation. The okay. Masonry foundation and site of the Graves Memorial Library for the purpose of exterior okay. preservation. They got a okay, chunk. Okay, sounds good. They got a chunk last year to be part of it, and they bid it out, and nobody would take it because it was such a small job. So the hope is that by adding it, turning it into a bigger job, someone will actually do it, and so it can be preserved. Okay, thank you. Um, I second it, so we will vote all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Article 7, 25,000 of CPA funds um, to match, to provide a match for a mass trails grant that the town applied for, for a feasibility study. Um, Basically connecting uh, Waitley Park and Ride to UMass via sort of hopefully a, a multi-use path along 116 is the idea. Select board's already voted. Um, motion that the Finance Committee recommend Article 7. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the last article is the CPA administrative article, putting $28,945 um, of 24 estimated revenues in historic resources reserve, the same amount in community housing reserve, the same amount in open space reserve, um, paying $25,401.91 for debt service on 120 North Main Street, and uh, 6000 for administrative Costs for the CPA. Uh, select boards are already voted. I move that the finance committee support Article 8. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was the last one, right? Okay. Um, I believe the consent, I uh, know, uh, Article 11 um, is revolving funds. Uh, no changes to the revolving fund limits from last year. So no changes, but we have to recommend every year. Yeah. Okay. I I a motion that finance committee approve article eleven. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. So it's like we doesn't have to do that one. We already did that one. Okay. Uh, and then the consent articles. Um, authorizing the treasurer collector, um, compensating balance agreements, uh, accepting grants, um, chapter 90 work, intermunicipal agreements, um, goods and services contracting, and borrowing. 
select board is voted three nothing to recommend. Can we do them all together? Do we have to? Do yeah, them? we can do yeah. all of them. Yeah, okay. I recommend that we um, support. I recommend articles. Finance committee recommends articles 13 through 18. I second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you guys very much. And that's everything we need to do for the warrant articles. But, uh, it is. We. I'll, I'll talk to Dan. Um, we may want to re vote them just so that there aren't questions of why some are two is zero and some are three zero. Okay. Um, just to avoid that. Yeah. Right. And we already decided we're going to do nine ten. Right. When. I feel like just having it on the record that we have, and then yep. because I've already over the votes the next time, at time meeting, if not, yep. um, and then obviously we can next time beat around and do that. All right, beautiful. Next up is the ditch discussion. You Are we good? Up? We find us, we can talk about ditches or we can leave. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> I mean. I know how I know it sounds super exciting. Are you motioning to adjourn? I will make a motion to okay. adjourn the finance committee meeting. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Thank you. All right. So that's Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Do you need anything else from me? No, thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Probably could have told you you could have left a little while. I was curious about the other uh, same stuff. The other, like, yeah. So we do appreciate you coming in. We really yeah, no, it takes time. time. And then when, when you have enough, you know, your your are over here, you need any input from uh, either myself or anybody else. You need just lots of stuff. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. It's lovely when. Local politics works. You know? <laughs> All right. Ditch discussion. Ditch discussion. Anything you changes from last week? Uh, I've started drafting a letter. Um, and just wanted to think through or get feedback from the select board about how to. I think the point of the letter was to see if there was anybody who was like, I will absolutely not go in the town. How do we phrase it so that we get responses? I guess um, I'm trying to think of so if you put it as the town is planning on 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 pursuing or you know the town is planning on pursuing these easements. If you feel strongly against that, please let us know now so that we. The town's considering the town, because that way they go, oh, they're going to do it. I better tell them now I don't want to do it rather than, hey, do you want to do this? They won't answer us. If you say, you know, if you don't tell us no, we're going to assume that everyone's cool with it. We're going to start going ahead with it. And then you're going to find yourself arguing with us over something. Tell us now if you have a problem with it. I think that's going to get a more likely response. Um, so my experience has been when when the town comes and starts talking about easements, people think I'm in a domain and you're gonna take our property. Yeah. And so, again, it's a start to the conversation and yeah. it's a good conversation to have, but um, I think we wanna be clear that we're not trying to take their property. And I can correct. Do that. Yeah. Correct. Oh. And, you know, and again, just for the purpose of clearing and cleaning out the ditch that runs through your property, we would, you know, need to have access to it, and in order to maintain that legal access, you know, we would need an easement. And I would put something in there. I said something along the lines of, like, you know, easement in order to access the dishes, in order to prevent property damage for yourself and other people along the. You know, they make well, them a reason to have an incentive. Again, I don't know if we want to actually say prevent because. If something help happened, it, it, yeah, yeah, you know, to help, right, help to potentially of, mitigate, yeah, because yeah, but we want to give them a reason to reply. We want to give them an upside for saying yes, and we want you know. So those are things that we want to, you know, make clear in that letter, right? And again, you know, 
obviously a get a phone number or some way to contact someone to ask questions and you know you know this isn't like it's going to be something that you know we're going to be driving through their property at you know midnight every other Tuesday you know this is something that you know once every couple years you know, or every few years, I can't imagine it would even need to be done on a yearly basis unless there is some type of. Yeah, I mean, if, if the whole system is working well, it should. Right. right. Okay. okay. So I will continue to work on that. Hopefully, have a draft. Yeah, I mean, you know, you may, again, can't guarantee it. Could not guarantee it at all, but you may have somebody that has some fencing or landscaping or whatever, and is going to say absolutely not. Yep. Um, you know, you just don't know. And until you ask the question, you know, I know I wouldn't want to tear out fencing and stuff to provide access to something. Yep. You know, possibly. Okay. Was there anything else you need to discuss on that or just that? Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, next up is select board updates. Uh, I don't believe I have anything. I got nothing. Wonderful. And I'm going to assume Dan doesn't have anything with Lisi because he's not here. All right. Uh, time is for updates. Jeff. Um, just two things that uh, came in um, a little bit late. Uh, last week, so didn't get to post it. Um, the first is the early voting hours. Um, so it's like four days to vote on the approve the early voting hours in the clerk's office would be Monday, April 29th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesday the 30th, and Wednesday the 1st from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then Thursday the second from nine a.m. to noon. Okay. I got you. Okay. All right. Um, any discussion on that? No. Okay. Any discussion? I would entertain a motion to approve the hours as read by Jeff. Oh. I said I motion that we approve early voting on the 29th from nine to five. Um the 30th and the 1st from 9 to 3, and the 2nd from 9 to noon. Seconded. All the paper? Aye. Aye. Do not Thank you. And then the other one was um, after the rain and ice and snow and sleet storm, um, we used a bunch of salt um, and material. So the highway superintendent uh, sent some messages. Our snow and ice wages um, is down to under three, under 2,500. Um, our snow and ice general expenses is um, about 8,000. And Second week in April now, we don't expect more storms. That being said, um, it, you know, better to be prepared than it be an emergency and we have to call a meeting to do this. So he is requesting um, an additional $8,000 um, for the snow and ice expense and an additional $5,000 for snow and ice wages. And just to clarify, this is us that's approving him spending into that deficit, not actually coming up with the money, right? right. Correct. Okay. So 5000 for the wages, and that would be if we need them this year. If not, they go back into, or we just, he just doesn't spend them. And doesn't, it's not that specific. Um, And then for the uh, round of, uh, general expenses, the, the ICE, um, I am correct that he's planning on spending that on getting more salt. Yeah, I think, it or not? I, I think right? he said we used like four loads last week, and um, he anticipates that salt is going to be more expensive next year, and so okay. um, just have it on hand. Yep. Okay. 
I got no problem with that. We need, we need to do. Um, any questions or anything for Trump? All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion to allow George to get to spend in the amount of 5000 for wages and 8000 for general expenses. All right. I motion we allow a total of 13000 for wages, 8000 for expenses, deficit spend for the highway department. Seconded. All of the paper? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, just the last thing we're going to push to next week, the executive session. Yes, we will be having the executive session on here, but uh, due to school cancellations, our, our last uh, meeting that's relevant to this, uh, we're putting that off until our next meeting. Speaking of our next meeting, that was the other thing. Uh, yeah. Next week is vacation week. Next Monday is Patriots Day. Um, do you want to have a meeting Tuesday? Do you want to only have a meeting if necessary, how do you want let's, uh, let's plan for meeting Tuesday if necessary, and by Thursday of this week when we had to post it, we would know. So let's uh, let's let's do that. Let, 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 let's assume we don't need to hold Tuesday in reserve if we need it, but most likely we won't. And if, if unless something important comes up between now and Thursday, I'm fine with us not meeting that week. Well, so, we would, we don't need it to help us. Next, those recommend those three. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that, and that we should probably at least do a short meeting okay. to finalize that. Uh, yeah, after I said it. Yeah, because we still have some articles that we haven't yeah, recommended. We have the clock. Also. Okay, so let's, yeah. let's plan on a meeting on Tuesday then, six thirty. Um, hopefully, it can be a short one where we just go over a couple of quick things. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna to have to do it remote Tuesday. Okay. Um, I also don't know if Dan's available Tuesday, but right. scheduling we can we do can do right. it all on. Okay. So we will be in discussion via email about specifics on that, and we will obviously post it as necessary. Yes, all right. Is that everything for you for your time Yes. All right. Any public comments before we move on? All right. Thank you. In that case, at this time, I would entertain a motion to. I adjourn. motion we adjourn. All right. Motion made. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing, 732, pick it up.